So what are we going to do for this um, report is first you're going to measure the weight of object one, which is the wooden plate. Um, why do you want to, so you want to me measure the weight, which is going to be, if you put it on a horizontal surface, this weight is equals to, this weight it will be equals to normal force. And using um, FG equals mass times gravitational acceleration. So ten meter per second square mass times. So knowing this, you just measure gravitational force, you know 10 meter per second square, so you can find mass of the object. And you're gonna do something same. You're gonna find the weight of the object two, which is the stuffy dog. Then you're going to find the mass of the stuffy dog by dividing with the 10 meter per second square. Um, what you're going to do is to attach the um, spring probe to the object one. And you're going to slide it, drag it along the horizontal surface at a constant moderate, moderate speed. Why do you want to use the constant moderate speed? How come it has to be constant motion? Because this is a friction force experiment. So you might want to think about that. Why? It's a friction force experiment. What happens when you're dragging uh, constantly? So I want you to draw um, clear, um, clear free body diagram, which is the uh, diagram with the force vectors when it's a constant motion. Here. When it's a constant speed. So try to draw as accurate as possible. So I would start from here. This is the wooden plate or something. What are the forces exerted? Try to draw the arrows, force vector arrows as accurately as possible. Vertically down, vertically up, horizontal, relative magnitude with each other. And is your uh, free body diagram, does it change if it's not at the constant speed? Think about that. Then what you're gonna do is to watch the video um, to record what is the, um, force, exerted force, right? This is the exerted force to move the object at a constant speed. So you're gonna watch the video, record the value, and then this mass, mass here, this one comes from the mass here. That's the mass for this mass. And then similarly, you have object one plus object two, so the mass changes. And then exerted force, you watch the video, exerted force changes. So you see, this is the Friction Lab video one intro, and you see that this is the object one. And we are going to, the one side has a plastic on it, and the other side has the wooden plate. So first we're gonna drag it on the wooden side, and then um, next, next experiment, we're gonna flip it to the plastic side. So that means the material changes. 
the mass doesn't change, but the material of the two changes. What do you do? You, would you see the different um, value in friction force? And you see that um, we're going to measure, you see? And here you're going to try to see the value of um, weight of this plate by itself. See, you can make a measurement. So that's how you can measure the uh, weight, the FG, gravitational force of the object. Right, then then you see, um, I'm going to put the plate on the wooden side down and try to drag it with a constant speed. And you can try to read the value when the object is in constant motion. How much force do we need for the object to be in constant, constant motion? And uh, why does it have to be in constant motion to find the kinetic friction force? To find the constant motion, constant motion it's about here. So one, two Newton is required to have a wooden plate to be dragged uh, with a constant uh, speed. So we just saw in a video, for example, the wooden plate that's in constant speed, the amount of force required was two Newton. And then um, I don't remember the mass. Um, we had some kind of a mass, M1. Um, this part, you don't need to do, I think I raised it. You don't have to do this. So determine the kinetic friction force when the object is put slow, steady rate um, at the object one is at the plate below. So when it's in a constant motion, That means that it's in equilibrium. So net force is equals to, that's right, net force has to be zero. And for the net force to be zero, um, pulled force, F pull, has to be equal and opposite to kinetic friction. So you can just write down to Newton in this case. The value here to Newton is going to be the same to Newton. Now we know that, um, let's see, Fk, this kinetic friction, F kinetic friction is equals to mu k n. And then N equals gravitational force for object one. So from here, we know that N, we know the FK, which is two Newton. N is the gravitational force weight of the object that you measured here. So that's N and you know the kinetic friction and that's how you can find the coefficient mu K. So after you find the mu k, I want you to write down here. I want you to write down mu k is equals to blah, blah, blah. Show your calculation, show your work. Show all your work, always. And um, predict what requires for uh, not just object one, but plus object two when it's at the, how much force do we need for the object one plus object two to be pulled at constant speed? You're gonna predict that value. 
how much force do we need to have the both object one and two, so object two is on top of object one to be moving with a constant speed. Then we're gonna have a new value, right? New value, which is um, new value, exert it. That's gonna be equal and opposite to the FK for object one plus object two. When you have a plate and then a stuffy dog. This one was found just with a plate. Now you have a stuffy dog plus the plate. But that's equals to, does a mu k depends on uh, how much stuff is on top? This should be equals to mu k n. But this is this mu k different from the mu k you just found? No, right? Because this object here, that's in contact. This is in contact. This is just the material property of the two objects. It doesn't matter what's in, on top. That doesn't change the value of the material property of the two surfaces in contact. So mu k still stays the same, but the normal force, now this is gonna be the one for the object one plus object two. So it's gonna be the weight of object one plus object two in Newton. So you from find you knowing this, you already know mu n, the gravitational weight of the two object, and you you found the mu k, and you can find you can predict. From here you can predict the um, exerted force needed to pull these two objects, the object one and object two on top of object one in constant motion. So you write down your predicted value, show your work, show your work. So you write down, explain why you did that. Maybe you can write your calculation here. Then, then you're com this is the predicted value. And then you also found the recorded value um, from the video, which is this one. So compare this value with this one. And then is that value equals to this value? It should be. And then discuss this one, determine a coefficient K friction. Should your answer change? The answer should be no, it shouldn't change. Um, for the next one, you want to flip it. Now we're going to flip the, so wooden one was on, on the bottom, but now I you flip the plate. So the plastic one is on the bottom and you repeat the same. Find the kinetic friction force. You determine the coefficient kinetic friction from, does it still remain the same? Then uh, lastly, you're gonna do the vector diagram. So let's see, here, the free body diagram. 